Good afternoon. My name is Seong. I'm going to talk about how to make your home smarter using your voice. So really, what is really a smart home? How many of you have a smart house right now? I can't see any. I, I got a few here. <laughs> so the first thing that you need to know is what is the definition of a smart home actually? But there's a lot of a different definition from different organizations and company. Some say smart home is actually a home automation. Some say it's actually all the electrical, electronic appliance are all connected together that you can remotely control. And in my op uh, honest opinion, uh, smart home defined differently at a different generation. Do you still remember how your home looks like a million years ago? Let's zoom back. <laughs> so imagine our ancestors tried to get something very basic. I mean, forget about the food first, forget about the smartphone. But the certain thing that we need is the light. During the nighttime, dark area, you need some light, you need to switch on the light. During that time, can we do that? We can't. We need to wait until the next day to have our sunlight to switch on us. So that is about four million years ago. And very fortunate, half a million years ago, we got fire. That's invented in Africa. And even that, you need like time, stone, the right stone, the right dry wood to get it done. All right? So moving forward, things getting better and better. We have the candle, we have the matches, you get things immediately. And not forget our brilliant Thomas Edison. Try a thousand inventions, then finally we get a bug. That lasts for 13.5 hours. <laughs> so moving forward from there, the evolution changes along the way. Then we have uh, Panda 4, then we have uh, LED lights, and to zoom in to what we are right now. It's not just a light that we can actually just press a button, switch on the button, or switch on the light. But there's a lot of other electronic, electrical appliances that we are going to use at home. For example, the TV, the fridge, aircon, security, and etc. So the definition given by one of the companies saying that a smart home is a home that incorporates advanced automation system to provide the inhabitant with sophisticated monitoring and control over the building function. In a layman term, just that a human can control a house. As simple as that. Right? So again, so the future is. It's going to be like this. You have a house, everything are connected, the aircon, the temperature, the TV, the thing. But what is it going to be? I mean, right now, for example, you have a smart home right here in somewhere. So you go about to finish, uh, then you just go to your car. You just ignite your car only. The car connect to your home, saying that, hey, my master is coming back home. The kitchen is start working already automatically to, kick, to cook your favorite pasta and your favorite cake. Okay, just five minutes before you reach your home, you know what happened? The aircon just switched on. Because when you, want, when you arrive, they want to make sure that you get a very nice temperature that you like. And then just one minute before you reach your home, the gate open. Once you go in, the gate close. Once you open the door, the camera start looking. Who are you? Security. And if you are bringing the gas, you know what happened? The Zumba Roomba or the vacuum cleaner going to clean the house. Make sure that the house is clean for the guests to come in. <laughs> you walk inside, there's your house. You sit inside, there's a camera that look at you and he know that what movie you want to watch. If there's a small little kid there, you will just do baby shark. That's my, my, my kid favorite. If you are with your wife, my wife here, Eileen, and the Korean movie will pop up. <laughs> so think not just into that, but if you went for your bedroom, for example, you sleep, your bed is smart enough. When you're at the wrong position, the, the, the bed is going to change your growth into your body. The next morning when you wake up, you went to the toilet, do your first thing, right? <laughs> then the toilet actually do measurement certain thing. And mesh, maybe measure your glucose. And he's going to tell you, Young, today your glucose is a bit high, don't take Daytare and Nasilima. Otherwise, get, there's a 95% chance you get a diabetes. <laughs> Scary? But the question back is, do you have a diabetes? Do you know that? <laughs> so that is really a smart home. So I hope that gives you a flavor what is a smart home going to be. And of course, there's a lot of a company out there provide this kind of a solution. But the question is, now you have a smart home, but how you actually interact? How the house know about you? Basically, there are a couple of methods. We call human computer interaction, human measure interaction. The first one is actually physical switch. You have switch, you just push, and you switch on. Either you got your smartphone, you got a laptop, you can do everything every, anywhere in the world to control your home. Then wherever, you wear your stuff, you walk in your house for example, 5,000 steps, the door just open up, and the house know that you actually run for 5,000 steps. The fish is going to give you water for 5,000 steps that you did. 
They may be available also for elderly people if they fail, so the system also can tell to the house to do certain things, to take action on that. Voice control is one of the most important communication as right now we are communicating with my voice as well as between yourself. So that is one of the most important things. How can we control the home with our voice? And of course, in the future, we're going to have a facial control, camera is everywhere. But just do this if you switch on the light. But just do that if you just zoom up certain thing. Or by just sleeping, then everything will switch off. So that, that's the sure. But today, I'm going to speak a lot more on the voice control. So how does it really work when we speak and I want to switch on the light? Right? Um, hello, can you see the ripple here? So what really happens here is when you say something, there is an A frequency that's moving. And what really happens is I, I, we take a microphone, it captures that kind of vibration, turn into a digital signal in the electronic point of view, and then there's a decoding part. This is where the AI comes into the place. You want to know whether it's do switch on the light or switch off the light. And then, of course, you have language, acoustic dictionary, and there's a le deep learning is coming, big data, and etc. Go to the text that it predicted, and right after that, to take an action. Switch on the light or switch off the light, as simple as that. Simple? <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, speech recognition technology out there. I mean, if you know about Siri, it was started in SRI International. I was there two years back in Silicon Valley. So I spoke to one of the, uh, not the founder, the, the company. Siri was intended for military, actually. But at the end of the day, it didn't work out for a couple of reasons. So Siri went for exhibition. And it just happened that the Apple top management saw that. And right after that, they said, that, I want this in Apple. And so what you have now. Along the way, a lot of uh, improvement. And all your phone has a lot of a different kind of technology for voice recognition. But today, I'm going to share with you, with a budget that you have, we have four. Of course, I'm sure that from, from low budget, medium budget, high budget, all the way into unlimited budget. I think most of you are from maybe the unlimited budget section. <laughs> but let's move on. Let's say you don't have any budget. How many of you here? Oh, OK, 50%, not bad. So you've got the light there, and you've got the switch here, and I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, want to, I don't want to go and walk to switch on the light. It could be lazy, it could be far away, and, and it could be anything. And the light itself is already very, very intelligent in the sense of if you look into millions ago, we are in the cave right now, we have that. But how to switch on? Where's Swan, Swan Chi? Where are you? Can you switch off the light? It's a bit glary. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what really happened here, you can just switch your voice and ask your friend, your roommate, to switch on the light. <laughs> But really, is I mean, when you ask, don't ask. For example, I ask my wife, wifey, can you switch on the light? Yeah, yeah, darling, go ahead, switch off. But don't ask when you forgot about her birthday. <laughs> Wife, can you switch on the light? You got no leg, ah? <laughs> and anyway, it's a true story. So I got a kid, one is five years old, one the other one is three years old. The five years old last year was four. And he always wanted to switch on the light. You know, kids are curious. They say, hey, what this is so interesting. So smart, ah. Pep, connect, switch on already. But we were worried because it's electrical. Then at one time, he said, let him do it and see how it goes. And he's not tall enough. He just push a chair there and then stand up and switch on the light. So every morning now, when we wake up, I say, son, go and switch on the light. Oh, daddy, go and, go and push a chair, stand up and switch on the light and come here to me, sit, look at me. You know what? He's waiting for me, for us to praise him. Oh, son, you are very good, very, very good. <laughs> I'm not sure they call smart home or smart daddy or mommy. <laughs> but again, I think this is very important because technology is going to take this away. Why I, I like to emphasize this because who enjoy this disconnected before it being connected? <laughs> so the next stage is really about the second stage. How many of you are hobbies? You are DIY, you are maker. Okay, and uh, you have maybe a 500 ringgit to do some stuff. So here I got a microcontroller. I got a speaker there, I put a shield, I'm going to connect to light here, and then with certain combination. So I was asked to come in to show certain things, so I don't know what to do, so I just want to, hopefully it works. Hello, can you see the mic? They just, just see the first row, they have mic, clap, state, and timer. As for now, just look into the mic. That is what my audio sound turned into an amplitude in the digital form, right? Hello, one, two, three. Can you switch on the fan and light? I have a lot of uh, visitor here and audience here. Please, please don't. Just switch on, just switch on. It doesn't work. <laughs> Why it doesn't work? If you still remember, I did mention about the decoding. First, it captured, become a digital. 
Then this is a part. You need to understand what action you want it to be. So make it simpler right now. I read another program. I just say that if it goes certain threshold, if you switch on. If you go certain threshold, if you switch off. <laughs> Imagine you put this in the bedroom and all of a sudden, very quiet, and you just snore. So <laughs> Jasmine mentioned about, I think Dr. Annie also mentioned about AI. So this is a kit that I did to be frank, coding, it just take me one hour. No, say one hour, one day. Lah. <laughs> but of course, if you have all the components ready. But the next one is more interesting. How can we use voice to do a command? Often we need to understand our male voice is about 100 hertz, female about 200 hertz. So this was we did three days, three days back. I combined my wife Eileen voice, A, B, C, with a high whistle. But the system need to recognize only Eileen voice, not my voice. So how can we do that in the digital world? Then we plot it into a figure in the time domain. You can see that. Can you understand that? No. If you are not Kero Neef in Metrics, you wouldn't understand. Me either. So you can actually translate it into fast rate transfer in the frequency domain. If you still remember, human voice is say about 200 hertz. And this is the big high frequency noise. And we can remove that in the high frequency domain, the immersed fast rate transport, and you get this back. A, With a clean B, C. ABC without a high noise. So then, of course, to do that, to program all the AI and so on, I, I don't think that we have the time to do that. But the main important is right now, are you going to be an expert in AI to do the coding? Are you want to hire or spend about millions to do all this stuff? Use your voice to switch on the light. Use your voice to actually control your fan and etc. You can actually do that actually with whatever technology that assisting. And this is a true story because a couple of weeks before I was asked to come here, I want to show certain things I can talk and then the lights just switch on. So I go to Alibaba, Amazon, and Lazada. I just bought something. All of a sudden, they say six weeks to arrive. I was like, what? Okay. Then I'll try to buy. I drove my car to JB, the biggest lamp, the biggest light shop in Johor Bahru. And I just showed the picture, I said, I want this. You know what he said? Hey, what's this? Huh? Oh, last year we stopped, but nobody bought it. So this year we didn't actually stock it. I was like, yeah, okay. Then I went to another shop. I said, maybe just the first shop, the second shop. Okay, we got it. He go back and come back to me. What's this light? Huh? I have not seen this before. Then I said, okay. Then I went to the third. The third one, there are five workers, very busy doing a lot of stuff, a lot of bulb like they have. Then I just showed them what I want. Then all of a sudden, they just look at it and say, everyone just freeze. They say, what's this like? I've never seen this before. Or oh, like, what? Then I have this tattoo I want to show, but I couldn't. Then finally, I just called all my friends, including my sibling. So my sibling in Singapore went to some shopping mall, say, hey, they got it. Then I need to drive the car to Singapore and try to get it. And well, not sure if I can get that. Let's see. Set, um, sorry, I, could, I can't remember the script already because of my stage fright. Okay, I got it. Set kitchen light to 25%. Here are some matching pictures. <laughs> we did more training. But again, if you have this light, if you have full of the room, for example, let's say now you want to change into another ambience. Set living room to sunset. Setting up the scene. Sunset. Play 25 minutes on Spotify. We need some coder to make it faster. You know, it's actually Spotify is a song. So you can just ask this to connect to your TV and then you play the song. So you try something else. And there's a lot of things that you can do. What's the weather today? In Savangjai today, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a forecast high of 32 and a low of 24. And I'm going to Thailand. What's the next flight to Thailand? Here are the top results, <laughs> starting with one from TripAdvisor. So you just explain everything. And I think I like this a lot. Where did I... Uh, sorry, let me try again. Remember, I put my money under the table. Okay, I'll remember that. Where is my money? I remember you told me. I put my money under the table. Ooh. 
You have unlimited budget. You look for Mr. Lok. I'm sure they can do a lot of stuff. And I think the stat request is actually by Bill Gates. The house is about $100 million. But really, are you ready to make your home smarter? Thank you. <laughs>